Hello, this is Dave Hammer, an amateur blacksmith with some experience I'd like to share with you. Today we're going to learn how to make a throwing axe. This axe head is about five inches or five and a half inches long. I started out with a piece of medium carbon steel, 4140 to be exact, 9 sixteenths by one and a half by three and a half. <clears throat> it's extremely important to heat it all the way through. This is a tough metal to forge if it's not. It's even a tough metal to forge if it is. <clears throat> We're going to start by putting a step back about one and a quarter inches. You saw me put a notch on that uh, using the edge of the anvil. Heat it back up. Use a hammer to uh, start this, making this step, a shoulder it could be called. <clears throat> I use half face blows, which means I hold the metal over the edge of the anvil and I hit the hammer, hit with the hammer half on and half off the anvil. This pushes up the end of the metal so it makes a step. You'll see me rolling that on the anvil and hitting it side by on each side. I do that because it's uh, upsetting and I want it to uh, stay the same uh, thickness. <clears throat> so I'll work it both on the edge and on the sides. I'm having a little bit of difficulty with that uh, using that tongs. Uh, if you welded a piece of like half inch round or half inch square on that and held it with that, it would be more stable. I'm just trying to show how this could be done or can be done with uh, using less equipment. This could would be done a lot faster also on the power hammer, but but this demonstration is about hand hammering, not uh, using a power hammer. See me campering those edges a little bit. I've got that step almost done. You're not seeing all the forging here. This steel is uh, hard to move. Um, you're seeing a fair amount of it, but not all of it. Next, I'm going to take that stepped area and I'm going to split it right down the center <clears throat> to the end of the step. To do this, I'll put it in a post vise and use the hot cut and a fairly heavy hammer to go down. Now that, when that step was forged, <clears throat> it elongated that end probably to about an inch and a half. I think that's a six pound sledgehammer I'm using there. You can see it actually cuts pretty quickly. The handle on the hot cut is loose as it should be so that I don't have a shock of me hitting it coming back into my wrist. Next is to open those up, open those ears up and I use two little fullers This one's probably only about a quarter of an inch on the end, and then I use a larger one to open it up. I'm going to be drawing those out on the anvil, so I want them open. Take that back and heat it up again. Bring it to the anvil. Again, this is all done just just under welding heat because this, um, if you let this 4140 cool, it's uh, difficult. Now I could have made this out of uh, mild steel and put a uh, medium carbon or high carbon bit in it, but but I chose to do it uh, all with this uh, one piece. You can see here I'm cam I'm chamfering those sides that's going to actually help me with uh, with the um, t using the tongs I should have done that at the beginning so now I have a better a better um, hold on it I'm going to draw these out to about maybe three sixteenths of an inch thick well, that'll lengthen them um, almost double the length of them almost
I'm going to turn that around into a circle and weld it into an eye for the handle when they're all drawn out. You can see I've definitely made some progress there. Come back. We'll do it a little. We'll speed this segment up. Again, you're not seeing all this forging, but you're seeing a good part of it. Next, I have to essentially put a scarf on the ends. And what I do, uh, this is for the welding. What I do is just thin the ends down to probably close to a 30 second, quite a ways. I could have done that directly on the anvil, but I have that little round uh, hardy tool, so I used it. Keeps me from hitting the anvil <clears throat> directly with the hammer when I go that thin. I'm going to make the round with uh, using this tool. This this is a hardy tool I made. Um, I need to work on it a little bit so that it uh, it's a little better sized for the um, my hardy hole. It's about an eighth of an inch, too small. I can still use it. I use it for a lot of things, but I just need to take some time and build up that uh, base so it doesn't move around so much. Get it into the circle. This is borax, 20 mil tube borax, same as what you buy at a grocery store. Put a healthy bit on. Bring it. You just forge welding, you just tap first, not hard, just a little bit, and put it back in. Put it back in the fire. This is actually the second round here. It's not that noticeable, but I'm actually bending that um, down and sideways so that I'm hitting on a flat surface. This ended up being forged weld very well. I don't do a lot of forge welding, but, but um, I'm doing more than I used to. Next is to work on the blade part. Actually, what you see me holding on to there with that pickup tongs is the eye. This is about a four pound hammer with a, with a, a, a peen that's about three quarters of an inch with a good radius on it. And I'm moving that um, steel. I'm beating on something that's 9 sixteenths of an inch thick there when I started, and that's a lot of steel to be moving. You have to be sure again that this is heated all the way through to this to the um, lemon yellow, close to white. If you don't, you're not going to move it. Or if you do move it, it's not going to be very effective. You can see that I've already, on the end, pushed that down to about half. We'll speed this segment up a little bit. Maybe a couple of them so you can see it being formed. I use uh, the flat side of the hammer or the, the side that has a little crown um, back and forth with the peen, getting the, sh the shape, the taper that I want. This gets pr actually pretty close to um, uh, forge to form. Um, you, you'll see me use a belt sander on it later, but I don't remove a whole lot. I use that belt sander mostly to just to move, um, to shape the outer edges, which normally, you know, a pioneer blacksmith would, would have used a file. <clears throat> um, here I'm using a, um, a um, drift that's specifically designed to be used uh, when you're making a throwing axe, you, you can buy handles that will match it. The high end, or the, the the wide end, is on the top of the axe. The handles go down through the top.
doing this would have been easier or better if I'd had a pipe that that um, drift would just go into and then I would have had a lot better support set the X on top of the pipe and the drift down through it and it would have had a, a lot more support uh, driving it down <clears throat> but I didn't have a a piece of uh, would have taken like one and a quarter inch pipe. I think that would have worked. But this worked too. You're seeing my whole method here. Not very sophisticated, but it works. Clean off as much scale as I can. I want this axe to have a shiny surface, so um, you're going to see me uh, grinding a lot of that off and um, and then polishing it here after it after it cools now don't don't quench this it would be really hard if you quenched it you just have to let it dry I set uh, this kind of thing on a, a soft fire brick and let it air dry I use this belt sander <clears throat> um, to, to, to shape to shape the axe it's it's not that far from where I want it. It's pretty close, actually. I could have done all this shaping with a hot cut on the anvil that I chose to, and then used a file. But since I have this tool, I use this tool. I love this belt sander. It's, uh, the belts are three inches wide and 132 inches long. You'll see, me, you'll see me use another belt sander in a couple minutes here, two or a few minutes. That's uh, two by 60. Again, I could have done this with a hot cap. Got it real close and used the fire. It would have been more of a purist method. This is um, a little bit of a modern method, but next I need a round surface to get the edges. This is a straight up and down belt uh, uh, configuration, so my drive pulley is in the bottom. The top has got a cover over it so that it's not throwing sparks into me, my hair, and all over the shop. This uh, throws them directly on the floor. You might think this would throw up a lot of dust, but it actually it doesn't. Uh, originally I had a shallow pan of water down here, but it actually made more of a mess with the water than without it. So I just do it this way, and then every time I finished using the sander, I sweep all this up. This works pretty good. This is probably a 36 or a 50 grit belt. Um, actually about three quarter wore out, but it still will grind a lot. Keep in mind that this goes from very thin at the edge, edge of the blade to the thickest part back by the eye, which is still um, that 916. So you see it there? This is the other sander, 2x60. It has a 2x60 belt. Probably going about 4,000 feet per minute, both of them. The drive wheels are about the same size, and the motors are 3450 RPM. Some belt sanders, the more professional ones, uh, go much faster, but this actually works pretty good. Adjust that up a little bit. I'll use the uh, slack where the belt is slack or not supported behind for sharpening and for irregular shapes. Again here, most of the grinding I'm doing is not shaping, uh, except the outside shape of the um, Axe that actually what I'm doing mostly here is taking off um, scale. I don't grind it all the way down. I, I, I leave a little bit of rough, a few rough spots in it so I don't grind it way down. Um, and that kind of adds to the um, rustic look. Next is polishing. I use black and green rouge. Here I, I applied a little bit of black rouge. I just polish it a little bit. Black rouge is supposed to be cutting. Um, I don't 
when I make something that's rough like this, I don't try to take out all of the scratches from the from the sanding, but um, most of it comes out. A little more rouge. People who sell this stuff like you to have uh, a separate um, place, a separate wheel for each type of rouge, and that's fine. I, I the belt on the or the uh, wheel that used to be on the right, um, I ruined. It actually caught fire on, on me when I was um, grinding something. I had to take it off. So and I haven't replaced it yet. So to clean the um, the black rouge out, I just take a screwdriver. You saw me use that a minute ago, and hold it on the edge, and it it, it run the run the um, buffer, and it flies off. So then you put the other rouge on. Actually, it works pretty good. Green Roost is a polisher. You can see the results of that little bit, a little more than I showed, but that's what, what we ended up with. Next is the handle. This is a pre-made handle. Usually I make my handles, um, but at a blacksmith conference, I ran across a pile of these, and I bought these for, I don't know, 3 or $4 or $2 a piece, whatever. They weren't much, or I wouldn't have bought them, I can assure you that because I pretty much make everything. I um, installed it, the head on it, the ax on it, and the fit was off just a little bit, so I'm sanding it for a better fit. As you saw, the handle on a throwing ax goes in from the top. What you do is you force it down until it's tight. But you want a fairly good fit, because you're not, in general, wouldn't put a wedge in there. the handle on that way. <clears throat> I think I'm going to think I'm going to sand that one more time. What I'm looking at, what I'm seeing there is air, uh, free space, open space down beside the handle. So I'm sanding the handle to get a little better fit. Doesn't have to be perfect um, because you just force it on until it's not loose. Sand it around. This is kind of a teardrop shape. That's going to be my final size there. I'll take it over the anvil and and um, put it, you know, bang it down until the, the um, handle is wedged in there very well. Now this is ha uh, handle is uh, long. Um, I cut it off about an inch above the the X head. <clears throat> and I cut the bottom off. It was longer than I wanted it. Uh, I cut it a little short. It would have been better if I had cut it maybe an inch and a half longer. It would have been good. But this is a good throwing length. Should have been over just a little more. This, this hammer is wedged in here now, so it's not coming off unless I drive it out. Take it back to the belt sander. That's what we got. Take it back and go around those edges <clears throat> so that they don't chip. But be very careful on this end because it's real easy to nick that head. And if it does, it gets, um, it messes it up. So. <clears throat> I wanted this a little thinner, so I'm gonna work it now. I should have done that before more. Same thing here, smooth it up. This is a finer sandpaper. I think I have a 100 grit on here. That's about three-fourths wore out also. So probably effective at 250 or 240 or something. Just smooth it. Now I put tongue oil on these kind of handles. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.